Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the 19th hole. We are live right there. Oh, baby, we are live on In Between Media. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the whole damn channel, and make sure you jingle that bell to be notified. We have moved on from the Masters, another Scotty Scheffler clinic out there. He dominated at Augusta National. Uh, we'll talk about that for a little bit, and then we'll jump right into the very next event. It is an elevated, limited entry event. 69 players, nice, have descended upon Hilton Head Island. And for the RBC Heritage, which is uh, pretty fun, pretty fun in a kind of a non-masters boring kind of way. No green jacket this week. We're going for a tartan jacket. Plaid is in just for this week. So uh, cut away your bombers. They're all in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic this week. We're going to Georgia on the coast. Let's hit it. There. <laughs> Town Golf Links on Hilton Head Island. Connor Coughlin. Oh, we got to switch this. I'm not Connor Coughlin. I'm another Irish bastard. Bo McBrayer. Connor Coughlin. Cut at cough <coughs> underscore DFS. I am at Bo underscore Mick Big Time. Check us out on the Twitter machine. We have Dee Dee from the Lake House. Shout out SoCal early on. She's right on time. We got the pride of Calgary, Alberta, Royal Slade. Good evening, fellas. We'll be sure to not talk too much smack about the Canadians in the field. Or the fact though, that I took Royal down in our pool over the weekend. That was pretty smart. I mean, I I wasn't even close. I mean, Royal at least had a good showing in our pool for the Masters. Harbortown is Seth's favorite course. Of course, it is the most boring course on the PGA Tour as far as what we're going to talk about a little bit later. Seth, come on, man. Come on. The only thing better would be if uh, Callum Taran was playing. Then Seth would be in heaven. Unfortunately, Callum Taran did not have the required cuts made to be <laughs> anywhere near this tournament. Uh, I believe he is at Punta Cana down the Dominican. So if you want to bet on him, Seth, go to the Punta Cana Resort at the Dominican Republic for the Corrales. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, yeah, you have to be good to get into the elevated events this year. And the top 69, nice. Uh, nice. Well above his pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he reads at a sophomore level. Yeah, he's English, so you'd think he'd speak it. <laughs> hey, not a horrible week last week. I just, it I want to be. It was for me. I, I hit some placement bets, but it was rough. Like you did better than I did last week. The streak is over. You beat me by 10 in our DFS matchup. Un. A wild turn of events where all both of us made a six for six lineup, just because mostly because the cut line flew to plus six on Friday when the conditions got to, well, they went from really tough to absolutely brutal carnage, which you love. You love I that. I love shit. the carnage. I love it. We had some six for sixes. And I had the first round leader. I called out Bryson at the tail end of the show. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, the hat Bryson had another strong short. showing. Yes, it did. The hat <laughs> plays. The hat does play. Um, and Bryson came out firing. He looked like vintage 2018 Bryson, which is always good to see. And then the lack of short game really killed him in the last three days of the tournament. And, I mean, it's fine. We got to see some vintage Bryson. Unfortunately, my guy Brooks Kepka was dead last among the 60 guys who made the cut in strokes gained putting. His ball striking was okay. He couldn't buy a bucket, though. And so, unfortunately, he shot over par all four rounds. It It, it is what it is. My guy DJ killed me out of $1,700 on underdog. It was It was bad all around. Thursday, I hit all four legs of my parlay on underdog. Thanks, Rosie. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, she knows you sucked. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and DJ was one over through 10 holes when they suspended play for darkness, right? And I'm looking at it going, okay, I just need DJ to shoot even par one under over the last eight holes on Friday. And I was like, oh, the conditions might not be that bad. They were really bad. And he shot six over on the rest for the rest of his round, the final eight holes, six over. And he was the only leg that knocked me out of winning $1,700 off of a $30 bet. Woof. My heart did break for you a bit. Oh. A little, a little. But because I went to bed thinking I had a pretty good chance. Because one over through 10, that's not bad. Like I could see him making birdies on 13 and 15, making some pars. This dude saw, he, I mean, he's a high ball flight hitter. And so the wind picking up really killed him. And he checked out. As soon as his first round was over, he had to tee right off for his second round in the same conditions. And DJ was absolutely done. Well, and I, th I think my big takeaway for the live guys is outside of like the eye test, which is about all we have left at this point, like mm -hmm. the further and further they get withdrawn from the PGA, the less and less like valid any of the arguments we had for them prior to them leaving are. They really so, yeah, do need look, the competition at this point, don't they? Yeah, I, th I think if we if we see them start to creep back into a few more events, who knows what's going to go on? You know, reports are Tiger had a really good meeting with the PIF and all that. So, I mean, maybe there's going to be some movement to kind of unify the tours if that happens. You know, some of these guys might might We're revive some of their uh, skill and and you know make a little bit of a comeback. But you what know, what about this point, Dean Burmester? Because I'm really curious about Dean Burmester. What live what Miami is, champion? What, what is, is a Dean, Dean Burmester? Burmester? <laughs> I last it's I a, heard it's a German head. Of, it's a German school administrator. <laughs> they should have let his ass in. He, he might have done better than the rest of them. <laughs> well, shoot, we saw some guys that we didn't expect to see at the top of the leaderboard, uh, namely first timers like Ludwig Oberg. <laughs> Did that guy look polished or what? Well, and it was, it's weird because he was like a late addition to my card. Um, he, he was right at the bottom of my column last week. I didn't talk mm -hmm. a ton about him. I thought I thought just like visually, he was another guy where I'm like, all right, he makes sense here, but mm -hmm. you never have a debutante do very well, Ooh. and especially with no major experience, like. And he just took everything in stride, man. Like he was like a little kid in a candy shop out there. And the whole vibe of uh, Oberg is like swag. It's it's what we need on the PGA. Like he's a lovable he has, guy. He didn't take himself he too has, serious. Like, and he had the rowdiest gallery on Sunday. Like they were rooting for the Swede, the 24 year old rookie Swede to take over and catch Scotty. Like there's nothing bad you can really say about Scotty Scheffler because he's a good guy wholesome figure and absolutely the best golfer on planet earth right now but they the crowds wanted ludwig or colin to make strides on that back nine and catch scotty i felt that in the air like they didn't want to see the chalk win but at the same time like when lud when oberg hit the ball in the water on 11 and smiled about it and then Colin did the same thing and dunked it and he said god damn it as soon as he hit the ball cuz he knew he hooked it in the water that that was the difference for me is that Colin was up here in his head already. And Ludwig was like, next, <laughs> I'm going to drop it, take my penalty stroke and my double bogey and move on. Like he was, he was over it and he made a charge after that. Yeah, he did. I mean, I like, here's the thing. I never take anything away from Scotty, but you know, Scotty, Scotty is the LaCroix of the PGA. Like, I mean, he just it's boring. <laughs> there's He's just nothing like, yeah, he's he is bordering at this point. Like you, you definitely got to put him in the argument as one of the one of the best players of all time. Like he's bordering on as good as Tiger was at Tiger's like peak performance. He's like if you look at, at what he's rate. doing. I mean, you you really can't you really can't uh, knock him down too much at all. But there's just nothing inspiring about Scotty. And like if you look at the viewership and the ratings and everything that goes along with it in the PGA right now, like we need a rock star. We need somebody that'll bring, bring people back to the PGA. And I don't think it's live. That's doing it, uh, drawing people away. I just think it's the politics and the bullshit that nobody wants to listen to. So nobody cares about that stuff, you know? And so I'm, I'm hoping that we stick a fork in Chambly at some point in the near future. So we don't have to listen to it for four days, but I also hope that some of these young kids like to become rock stars I mean, I can't know. help it though. When you're listening to the broadcast and you know, it's every tie is to the, the, the live political bullshit. It's just like, dude, that's not even really like a thing. <laughs> like, just leave it alone. So I left my drink in the other room. What, are, what do you have? 
Uh, I dusted off the old Eric Church single barrel, Jack Daniels. Mm. I to just this looked day up. when I hear that song, see you standing <laughs> there all night long. I looked up and I was like, ooh. You would have old. discount shades in a store-bought tan. <laughs> Flip-flops and cut-off jeans. Even you don't know what's going to... You don't know what I'm going to look like after we come back from the next drop. I could be that guy. That would be quite the costume change, Clark Kent. <laughs> <sighs> But yeah, no, it's delicious. I haven't had it in a while, and it uh, still tastes good. Jack gets a lot of shit, but like old number seven, smooth, good, charcoal filtered, technically bourbon, but Tennessee whiskey. And all the offshoots of Jack, like Gentleman Jack's delicious. You got your, you got all sorts of varieties. Even the honey is good for mixing. Like you can't go wrong with Jack Daniels. No, and the single barrel Jack is fantastic. Like oh, I, yeah. I think people, I think people don't know what they're in for because they're like they think it's going to be like old number seven. It's nothing like old number seven for the most part. Like I mean, you can Seth, taste some. That, Seth, some that is factually incorrect. Jack, Jack Daniels has hurt a lot of people. However, <laughs> violently, a lot of people have been hurt by Jack Daniels in a violent and just unbelievable way. But it's still worth it. <laughs> <laughs> if you can manage yourself with Jack, he's a good friend. He's a confidant. He will listen. <laughs> He'll <laughs> indulge you, that's for sure. Oh, yes. He will <laughs> encourage you to do things you would never thought you would do. Oh, should we should we get into it? Uh, yes, let's uh let's hit into the caddy notes and talk about Hilton Head Island, Georgia, 150 miles due southeast of augusta scotty went all the way back to dallas and he's supposed to come back to to georgia for this it, i don't know what do you think i think it's up for debate i think we're going to talk about it all right well we'll talk about it in 30 seconds <laughs> Flapping, flapping, flapping. Caddy notes. All right, Connor, Bo. give us the Cliffs notes on this golf course. Pete Dye. It is a Pete Dye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. We are at RBC Heritage, Harbortown Golf Links in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, par 71, 7,213 yards on the high side. Fairways and greens are both Bermuda. This is a second course, our second shot course to the max. A lot of forced angles, overhanging trees. Distance is relatively unimportant here. The average off the tee distance Irrelevant. substantially lower than your uh, tour average. Uh, greens are smaller than average as well um, and also are susceptible to some of the ocean winds if we do get some wind playing in this week, which right now it's possible but unlikely. It's more likely that we're going to have some thunderstorms, a little added moisture. Um, so being all that said about the greens, uh, good, good around the green game is important. Um, and most specifically when you're on the green, you need to be a really good putter. This has a tendency to turn into a putting contest. Definitely want guys that are uh, known, known to have a good flat stick or known to avoid three putts. Um, but other than that, um, Bermuda, there's not a whole lot to say about this place. It, it's your typical kind of ocean, ocean peat die track, um, we were joking before the show. This is probably the least inspiring uh, Pete Dye track that is in the Rota. Pete so. drew this course on a napkin. I'm just picturing when James Blunt wrote You're Beautiful. This is how Pete Dye designed Harbor Town. I feel like James Blunt ended up in a better spot, though. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, the, as far as movies go, like the, the first, the original is always the best. The sequel, hit or miss. The third version or the fourth version or the eighth version. Uh, this is too fast, too furious. This is too Pete to die. <laughs> Uninspired, 7,200 yards, below tour average, target golf, plan your way around the course, hit it straight. Uh, bombers have no advantage here. You have no power here. <laughs> Which it's, they really don't. It's none because you're just going to find yourself deeper into the Bermuda rough and under the tree branches, and these greens are tiny. 
and they're undulating and you just have to have a really good second third and fourth shot here as long as you can find the fairway here you still have to stick it close you still have to be able to make putts and get around this course it's about average difficulty right like you're looking at 15 to 20 under par here and the weather is not really going to be a factor like it was last week thank goodness I think where the weather might be a slim factor, I was just going to touch on the weather, yeah. is that the, there are thunderstorms overnight and into the morning. So, like, I do think that it, this place is going to be extra receptive and a little bit slower than typical for the morning waves. Um, and that's actually pretty consistent, um, at least when I looked earlier today. That's going to be pretty much consistent throughout the tournament. Uh, you kind of hope that some of the wind comes in later in the day and dries it out a little bit. Otherwise, this is going to be, like, straight up, straight up dart throwing. Like, just... Yeah, and with how good these guys are, this is by far the strongest field this tournament has ever seen. It's the first year as an elevated event, only 69 entries. And let's say our world's best golfer, Scotty Scheffler, sticks around like Meredith, first kid. Maybe she goes past 40 weeks and doesn't have doesn't go into labor this week. Scotty Scheffler, in soft conditions, he might just go bananas and win this thing wire to wire with no issues whatsoever. Uh, stats to build around every way I did it, no matter what I did, Scotty Scheffler was number one by a long shot. Every way I did it across the board. And the only thing he was kind of mediocre at was putting. And we saw how he puts recently at Augusta National, the toughest place in the world to make putts. Scotty Scheffler was making all the damn putts. His short game is immaculate. His ball striking when he's he was on Sunday was off on his approach game he was oh. off his distances were off and it didn't matter because he was so good around the greens and making those clutch putts from five to eight feet that tripped everybody else up it was like scotty scheffler was playing a whole different golf course without any wind without any speedy greens and runoffs it did it, it just seemed like this guy was unaffected by everything else that was bludgeoning the rest of the field. And especially course, for a like, guy who hits like greens at 74%, like at a 74% yeah. clip, like he doesn't miss greens and he was like missing a lot of greens. And I, honest to God, at this point, he, he better be naming his kid after Rory in some capacity because yeah. Rory telling him to pick up that spider was yeah. the best thing that's ever happened to Scotty's golf game. Cause he's making everything. <laughs> it's scary. Happy learn how to putt. Uh oh, <laughs> 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 shouldn't have been standing there. <laughs> he shouldn't have been standing there. And unfortunately for Rory, Ted Scott, <laughs> Scotty's caddy has made more than him this year on a 10%, 10 basis. Ted Scott, obviously, the average caddy salary is 10% of their players' earnings. Mm -hmm. I think Ted's t well taken care of either way. Uh, he's now won four green jackets on the bag, two with Bubba and two with Scotty. Uh, well, I mean, Rory's have... already clubbing him. He might as well caddy for him and make more money. For sure. <laughs> I don't know that he's as good of a caddy as Ted Scott, though. That's, no, no that's, that's probably true. <laughs> yeah, I think Ted's pretty secure in his job. Um, to round out our notes on the course, uh, Bo kind of hit on it. 15 to 20 under is about where I expect it. Um, previous winners, you got Matt Fitzpatrick, 17 last year. Jordan Speed, 13 the year before. Fitzpatrick. Stuart Sink, 19 the year before that. Uh the only the only course that Webb Simpson even thinks about playing well at is this one twenty two, <laughs> and then CT the Pan RBC so. Webb Simpson Open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> um, and then stats to build around. You kind of mentioned it, but um, if if you're building a model and uh, ignoring the fact that Scotty Scheffler is probably going to win, um, fairways and regulation, greens and regulation, opportunities gained, guys that are sticking it close, getting really good looks at um, at birdie or better. Shots gain approach. Uh, specifically, I would look at the area 175 to 200. About 30% of the approach shots this week are going to come from that range. He's correct. Uh, strokes gain par five, strokes gain par four. Within the par four, specifically 400 to 450 would be the bucket I would look at. And then all the putting sets that we've already talked about. Um, strokes gain putting in general on Bermuda, uh, three putt avoidance, and then overall bogey avoidance. Those would be the big things I would look at here. Um, and frankly, and it's a well-rounded type of setup, so I'm pretty evenly weighted, uh, probably just a smidge higher on putting and approach stats than the other ones, but for the most part, pretty balanced build this week. Yeah, very balanced on my end, too. I think uh, we have a very similar player pool, and uh, I think the only difference might come in who we're betting on based on the odds. 
Uh, uh-huh. So let's let's jump right into it and twirl some clubs, Connor. <laughs> Every Shout out to Brad, Chad, and Thad. You ever seen? You ever seen basketball? Yeah. Uh, every time I see him, I think first you get the jobs, then you get the khakis, then you get the girls. Every time I see those guys, that's yeah, all I can think of. Yeah. Uh, so DraftKings Sportsbook. That's where we're pulling our odds from. You can use any book you want. DraftKings Sportsbook. Very accessible. Not available in California, unfortunately. So I have uh, somebody do it for me. <laughs> but that's off the record, of course. Yeah, nobody blasts that out on social media. Of course not. Um, Scotty Scheffler plus four hundred to win outright. I think it's a little long for what we've seen. <laughs> he was plus four fifty to win the damn Masters and blew away the field. I think what we have here is a little bit of Meredith Scheffler baked in here at plus four hundred because I was ready to bet him at as low as plus two fifty. So the fact that we're getting this guy at plus four hundred again. The green flag racing and plus money for top five. Are you fucking kidding me? That's the one I can't figure out. Like it's not the it's not the plus four hundred being too like too long. No. It's the plus one ten for a top five. Like if he plays, that's automatic supersonic. Yeah, like I I bet your mortgage, fresh. but don't bet your mortgage. Like Funky I mean, fresh. <laughs> I can't see a I can't see an alternate reality where that doesn't hit, but. But um, let's say Scotty doesn't stay in this tournament. But let's We're, just say for the record, if he does, he you wins. should bet the plus 400. Yeah, and the plus 110. Yeah, well, why not get them both, really? Yeah, that's that's a, that's smart money. That's... Uh, <laughs> and But let's, without going into too much detail, Scotty Scheffler is by far the best golfer in this field, even though it's a really strong field. Where do you go after him? We have a lot of guys here where it's again baked in that they think Meredith might go into labor, sending Scotty home to Dallas and putting the rest of these guys. There are one, two, three, four, five, six gentlemen below Scotty that are fetching less than 20 to one odds to win out right here. Obviously, with Meredith Scheffler baked in here, uh, where do you go if anywhere? To be honest, I have a, a, a sliver of interest in uh, Oberg. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think this did is going to sound weird. Did you because, see the updated video of him saying his own name in his Swedish yeah. dialect? What is it? Ober? Obai. Obai. <laughs> yeah. I am never going to Ludwig Obai. No shot that I get that. Yeah. So uh, just call him Oberg. Be English about it. It's easy. I'm just going to start calling him Luda. He goes by Ludi on on Instagram. Well, that's what we're calling him now. Uh, plus twelve hundred on him seems like he's getting to the point where you can start to make an argument that he might be a little bit course proof. He just shows up. He's got a well rounded enough game uh, that I, I think I think he does well anywhere. That being said, though, the areas of his game that still sketch me out from time to time um, are some of those longer approach areas. So knowing where the approach shots are coming from and knowing that his, you know, 313 average drive is not going to really come into effect at this course. I I have interest, but I haven't pulled the trigger quite yet. Like I think he'll show up and I think he'll play well, short. but but I, yeah, it seems, it seems short to me. Um, This, this just does not seem like the course that I would be lining up to bet him at, but I more than likely he ends up on the card just because, Maybe it's recency bias, but he looks like the real deal. He's definitely the real deal. Whether he's ready to win on the PGA Tour yet is remains to be seen still. And in a field this strong, I kind of tend to wait and see on him. In a lesser event where he might tee it up against a lesser field, I, I would be fully on board with 12-1. to 1. But in a field this strong, I'm not doing it. Uh, I will be playing a shit ton of him in DFS. Uh, the guy I've been gravitating to based on model is Xander Shoffley. He was number two in my model pretty comfortably, but the guy's just like, he's not finding fairways. That seems pretty important here. 
everything else seems good. He, second shot golf course, Xander's really good. He's an excellent short game player. I just don't know that 10 to 1 is something I want to look at. The guy with the, well, the odds that I was impressed by and also did well last week, Colin Morikawa. Do not sleep on Colin on a golf course like this. Off the tee, he's excellent. On just second skip shot, right over my boy Tommy Fleetwood. I'll talk about Tommy in a second then. I was getting there, man. I'm not disagreeing with you on Tommy Fleetwood. I just don't think Tommy's ever going to win a PGA Tour event. So, so I like to jump in on your Colin thing. Like, I was really kind of excited to see him playing in somewhat Colin Morikawa like form. He looks so good it, until he didn't, and then I was like, <laughs> "Oh Christ, Yeesh. what happened?" <laughs> One little bad shot on eleven, and he was checked out. So. I, I'm leery of Morikawa. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, it's nice to see him like putting it, it together a little again. bit. But Make Colin stick it close again. <laughs> <laughs> but he kind of is striking me as like a bet, a bit of a mental midget. Like he just like can't, he can't come I mean, back from an error. You are still talking about a two-time major winner in brutally Two years difficult ago. conditions. Yeah, but still, those were in brutal conditions. So I don't think he's that. I just think that. If he has any doubts about his putting, it shows up when the pressure is up. So the fact that he did have a strong showing at Augusta when the conditions again were brutal, it, it lends me to believe in his confidence a lot more because there was nothing that could have put more pressure on his putting than, than those conditions at Augusta and something like Hilton Head where, yeah, it's tough to putt there, but it's going to be a lot softer. It's going to have a lot less danger around the greens than Augusta had. I think that we might see the talent rise to the top again for Colin, which would, again, snowball his confidence higher. He's got immense talent. They do not undersell how good of a golfer this guy is, especially if we start seeing putts fall. This this guy could win any tournament he enters. And at 18-1, to one, uh, I hold a lot more confidence that he would actually win something versus Tommy Fleetwood, who stat darling on a course that requires accuracy. You can't ignore it. Tommy Fleetwood is one of the most accurate players on the planet. But talk about mental midgets. This guy folds under pressure like a lawn chair every Sunday. Doesn't matter how good he's playing. Except for Masters Sunday. Yeah, but he was there was no pressure because he wasn't in contention, really. He was... <sighs> He was adjacent to contention, but he wasn't chasing Scotty down. So, so the mental gymnastics of it aside, like I, I think, I think skill wise, like you, like you just said, I think Colin Morikawa has a lot of upside. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't think that's a bad bet by any stretch. I, I'm probably a little less sold that he's back back. I think he put together a couple of, couple of good like rounds over the weekend, which was good to see. Um, I think with Fleetwood, where I just have a little more confidence at the same number, um, and it's it's not a ton more confidence because we all know Tommy <laughs> Fleetwood doesn't win in the United States. Um, but he was seventh at Bolero, where he gained uh, ten and a half strokes tee to green. He would gain four and a half of those on approach. Seems good. It's not bad. Uh, two and a half strokes around the green. So when he missed, he was getting up and down, taking care of business. Uh, he's accurate off the tee, good on proximity. Um, so. And then third last week at the Masters where, like, yeah, maybe the pressure was off, but he made a hell of a run on Sunday. Um, and he gained 11.4 11, 11 strokes total over the course of the tournament, which is no joke in those conditions. Yeah. Um, you know, and prior to that, he had a 35th at the Players, a 10th at the Genesis, uh, did miss the cut at API. But, I mean, before that, he hadn't missed a cut in God knows when. Um, yeah, so, I mean, he's there and he's, he's in good form Plus 400 for top five, which I think is, I think that's another goofy number, right? Like, right. I think that, I think in his form, um, I, I think plus 400 is awfully long. Like, yeah, I mean, that's, really for, that's for where I like him. I like him outright here. I think that, I think that if there was a course one time, Tommy. If there was a course that made sense for Tommy, I think this is probably one of them. It, every time we say Tommy Fleetwood, it reminds me of the movie Snatch with Jason Statham and his friend <laughs> Tommy. 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 You like dags? One time, Tommy. <laughs> one time, do not be a dumbass. Where's <laughs> me, Kevin? Proper. Proper fucked. Proper fucked. Yeah, that'll be Tommy <laughs> on Sunday. Proper fucked. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> anybody like in this 20 to 30 range? Um, I'm kind of, I'm thinking you're going to say Willie Z because he's a ball striking genius. Uh, Cam Young here has some intrigue, but his short game is so bad, like real bad. Like we saw Cam Young short game at Augusta National exactly how we said it would happen. <laughs> Where, yeah, oh, Cameron Young has a eight-footer for Eagle, and he made a bogey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, I can't. I can't do Cam Young. I, wanna, I want to, but I can't. Um, in this range, uh, I, I would go back to Fitzpatrick again this week. Um, definitely think that that sets up pretty good. 25 seems like a good number on him. Uh, yeah, Zalatoris. So, uh, Zalatoris is just good at golf. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, we, we're coming off a ninth, uh, at the masters, uh, where the argument always with Zalatoris is the short game portion uh, of his game and specifically the putting. Well, I think that's like a stigma that's just like lingered that maybe isn't accurate anymore. Like when you watch him putt, it's still sketchy. He's still not awesome, but he's not hemorrhaging strokes on the green. Um, but in his approach, considering game, what we saw as far as everybody struggling last week. He didn't look that bad. No, I'd say quite the opposite. Like he looked, he looked like he should have been fighting uh, at the top on Sunday. I mean, I just, I think Willie Z came back from, from injury uh, somehow even better than he was before he left. And so uh, I like him to get it. I like him to take it down here, man. 28 to one. uh, Oh yeah. Like I I can definitely see a path to victory His approach game. Stellar accurate guy. Like, all right, I have two guys, both at thirty-five to one. I both lo- I love both of them dearly. I think you do too. I need you to make a coin flip choice here: Russell Henley or Justin Thomas. <sighs> Henley, of course, is a horse for the course. I'm glad Henley... you didn't make me pick between Siwoo and one of those guys. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I know you love Siwoo. Siwoo thirty-five to one, also decent pick. Very guy specialist. Yeah, but Russell Henley on Bermuda, accuracy driven course. He's a putting genius. Like this, this guy, second, third, fourth shot. Russell Henley is masterful. Uh, and then Justin Thomas, second, third, and fourth shots, second and third shots, especially approach and around the greens. Justin Thomas is nails. Uh, I think I, I, I want to bet both of them, but if I was to bet one of them, who would you pick? I'm going to go Henley. Like I'm going to have to like eat, eat crow on this whole Justin Thomas player of the year, comeback player of the year thing. Like he's just not not good at golf. It's not looking good. Yeah. He's just like, let's just call what it is. He's not good at golf anymore. I like, and I, I don't know when he's going to get it on track, but I don't see it being this week. Are you taking Siwoo over Henley? No. in that, in that circumstance, if I got to pick between Siwoo and Henley, I'll take Henley. Um, Okay. That's what I thought you would say. And that I agree with you wholeheartedly. Russell Henley is the play here. But I do love the Korean Ric Flair. We woo, yeah. Uh, I have no interest in Shane Lowry, despite every other expert wanting to talk about him. He Same. is fifty eighth in this field in strokes gained putting on Bermuda. It's the bad. That's really bad. Really bad. Cam Davis. I'd rather have him over Tony Finau, and that's just because he's a Bermuda guy, accurate player. Uh, more of a stat darling. He's kind of an Alex Noren type, Uh, but Brian Harmon's popping up for me. Talk me out of Brian Harmon. I can't stand watching him play. Uh, He obviously plays well here because the course is set up for little dink and dunk uh, casual players like him, like him that hit the ball 260 and just put the lights out. Like he's, he's one of the best putters on Bermuda we we've seen. So what, what is going to hold Brian Harmon back here? Uh, nothing other than Brian Harmon. I mean, I, honestly, he he fit, he fits the course. He puts incredibly well. Arguably, one of the best. Not arguably, is one of the best putters on tour. I think the thing with Harmon is is that <clears throat> the approach game can get a little wild. And though he's an incredible putter, he's not exactly the best like uh, around the green guy. Like the wedge game is a little suspect. And the other thing too is with Brian Harmon's shot shape. Um, Jesus. I'm not. I'm not sold that that he sets up for this specific short track. Like it just doesn't. Yeah, and he's played awfully this year. Awfully. Yeah, he just really is not in the form. And and frankly, at fifty to one, I have a hell of a lot more interest in Denny McCarthy, who's another guy. Great putter. Um, that makes sense here. Excellent putter. Excellent approach. 
Um, this is just Denny, one of those courses. Denny rolls like like the two guys. If you if you want to learn how to putt like a champion, look at two guys, Cameron Smith and Denny McCarthy. Like their putting strokes are like velvet. Like they make everything. Or and if it doesn't go in, it looks like it's going in until it doesn't. But yeah, I like going back to just kind of horses for courses. I mean, Denny McCarthy makes sense, right? Like mm -hmm. not incredibly long off the tee. He's not going to need it to be here. He's got a good look from almost every approach bucket and he makes damn near every putt he looks at. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it just makes a lot of sense. Brian Harmon is a lot more iffy again, same type of skill set, but I'm just a lot more sold that Denny's just a little more steady Eddie. And, and if it be one, he'd be my Denny play. damn near come back and win. Uh, the week before the Masters with a back nine twenty eight. Uh, yeah, Denny can play a little golf time to time. Denny catches fire sometimes, and <laughs> you can't beat him. Like Akshay got lucky that Denny did a chili dip on on the eighteenth hole in the playoff. But uh, like this, this is a guy that can win just about anywhere he plays, and that's because putting travels. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're a world class putter, you can play any course and have a chance. Uh, one guy that does not necessarily have a chance that I can't seem to figure out. He is the most enigmatic betting play on this board. I ran the model once and it, he came up fourth. I ran it again, filtered for Pete Dye design courses, and he fell to dead last 69th when I filtered for Pete Dye designs. Ben on what the hell are we doing with Ben on this week? Um, I'll be playing Harris English at the same number. When's the last time Harris English did anything? Actually, I was really surprised by this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew you had to have something because you said that name and I, my eyebrows went out like, are you serious? Harris English? Funny he's you should American. ask me. He's not even English. He's an American. Did you know that Harris English finished in a T22 last week? So... Yeah, but did you know that he finished in that spot with five other guys that were favorites of the tournament? So it just goes to show you he was playing that well. But more importantly, um, a couple of things that turned me on to him this week. Over the last 24 rounds, he's actually 14th in the field in fairways gain, 10th in the field for greens and reg. Um, putting's been solid, not great. Um, but what's cool about Harris English is he can catch a hot hand putting. Um, and his approach game actually is probably the only thing that does stay somewhat consistent for him. So strokes gained around the green, he's eighth, um, you know, and then what even was more surprising with Harris English's game is he uh, was in the top 15 for strokes gained on par fives. So I just think that if you look at what he's done over the last 24 rounds, he's actually been playing like sneaky well. Um, and again, just another guy that is the type of dude you're looking for. Solid approach game, knocks it close, can get the hot hand with the putter. Um, to answer your question, why do I like him better than Ben on? I would like Ben on at a course that's wide open off the tee that he could use some of that distance. Yeah, um, it doesn't ben matter. on tends to flight the ball pretty high. There's going to be some prohibitive shots here where you're not going to be able to flight it pretty high. Um, so I don't, I don't know. This is not the track I'd play Ben on at. I recognize Ben on has been playing excellent golf. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, but this is just not, not the course I'm looking to fire him up. We'll get back to Ben on in the coming weeks. All right, so I saw a guy on here that I really like playing because he makes me money sometimes. Christian Bezadenhut, a South African. If there's one thing he doesn't have, it's much of a short game around the greens, but he's a great putter, great approach player. What am I missing here with Christian Bezadenhut? He didn't really hit my radar this week the way I waited my model. I, I mean, I recognize the same thing you do. Good, good player. I, I'm not going to try and try and talk number you off. Number one, number one, strokes gain putting on Pete Dye courses. Number one. Yeah, like I said, I I didn't put a lot of stock in what I was seeing with him this week. It's not because I don't think he's a good golfer, but I would let you, I'd have to defer to you. Like I didn't I didn't put much research into Cebaz this week. He's another guy. Recognize he's playing well, but I'll get back to him in a different place. Seventy to one. I think I'm going to take a, like a half unit shot on throw ten bucks on Christian. Uh, plus 550 top 10 is intriguing too. Uh, that that's interesting because I think he fits this course really well. He he seems to fit he seems to fit Pete Dye designs really well according to my modeling because uh, he jumped up really high as soon as I filtered for Pete Dye courses. Uh, he played well at the players. He played well 
other places, obviously. Um, but there are guys down the board here. I'm going to skip quite a bit down after Bez. So do you have anybody in between there? Tom Hoagie? Are you a Tom Hoagie? I was just about to say, did you see me? Are you a sandwich fan this week? (laughs) So anybody who's watched this show knows Tom Hoagie and I have a very um, complicated history. Uh, They they fight constantly, but they make up with it with with, uh, uh, strokes gained on approach. Like like Connor's Achilles heel is overweighting strokes gained on approach. Tom (laughs) Hoagie pops up so high in his model that he can't ignore it. He's like, I can't quit you, Tom. I, th- I thought maybe you were going to say I fucking love sandwiches, but <laughs> well, that that's a given. Uh, no. So Tom Hoagie. Yeah. I wrote Tom Hoagie up this week. Um, love, hate deal. I uh, uh, play him, play him at your own risk. If I'm on him, uh, <laughs> it doesn't tend to go very well for me, yeah. uh, but I will say this. He opened at uh, um, 80 to one. He's up to a hundred to one now as of about yeah. two minutes ago. So for a guy that rated out uh, second to only Scotty Scheffler in approach um, and is historically a pretty decent putter as well, um, it, it, it's a course, again, that makes sense. Tom Hoagie is not very long off the tee. Um, we don't really care about it. He is incredibly accurate. Uh, second, like I said, in approach to Scotty, second to Scotty in opportunity gained. Like Hoagie has also been playing really well this season. So, I don't know. But maybe, if he misses the greens, as as in his world class approach game is a little bit off. How good is his short game, Connor? <laughs> well, I don't know how you ran it, but <laughs> but for oh, me, you know how I ran it. <laughs> so so for me for me he's he uh, didn't rate oh, out poorly in my model. He's kind of middle of the pack, but he rated fifth looking. overall for me. He was eleventh in uh, strokes game putting on Bermuda for me over the last twenty four. Where his where you're where you're right is his uh his up and down ain't great like if he misses the green um we're, we're gonna have some real problems uh he's 69 all over 69th of 69 in uh Not strokes good. in around the green so Not good um but you know birdie or better he's eighth in the field um bogey avoidance 16th in the field so i i kind of like the way he sets up i mean he's just playing well he's playing good golf are we doing the Eric Van Royen thing this week? I don't know if I'm betting him yet. He'll be a, he'll be a play in DFS, but 110 to one. I, I think I'm going to pass this week. He he's intriguing. He reads out decent, but I think I'll save him for DFS, same as you. So should we just drop to Chandler Phillips and call it a night? Or <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Chandler Phillips, uh, 300 to one, definitely, definitely, definitely throw some bucks on that guy. He'll have his fly swatter swatting. Uh, yeah, Eric Barnes. Eric, Eric Barnes is out there down there at what two? He's also at 300 to one, so two guys right there. Um, are you gonna throw a thousand to one on Kevin Kisner? Five bucks, 100 yeah. percent. Like, if somebody gives you a thousand to one, <laughs> it's worth five bucks. His <laughs> is gonna play the entire round mic'd up <laughs> because he's part of the broadcast crew and playing <laughs> pulling double duty this week. You said duty. <laughs> what do you think of Jake Knapp? I don't know, and it's he's got the firepower. I don't know if he has the bogey avoidance to hang around this place. You know, you and I pointed out with him that I think the perception is he's this bomber guy. He's not, and well, he is. Yeah, but well, that's yeah, not he how he's been getting it done. It's the absolute piss out of the ball, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if I. The odds are great. Like he's getting disrespected this week on the 180 to one. <sighs> I, I think I'll throw a top 20 on him because he's got the firepower. To, if he's if he's hitting fairways which is a big if this week, then I think he does fine. But Top 10 big, plus 1,200. Big if, big if. Oh, right, that's going to that's gonna find its way to my card for sure. He's definitely going to be in the DFS pool for sure. Um, oh, that's going to find its way to my card. Let's try not to slam trunks. Connor, <laughs> we, neither one of us slammed trunks last week. It was a solid DFS week. Uh, the money didn't flow in for me because I had too many guys who made the cut but didn't do anything else. Let's try to better ourselves at the Royal Bank of Canada, <laughs> Harbour Town. Harbour Heritage. Town. Yeah. The club is wet. This would be a wrestling
I have a feeling we're going to talk about a lot of the same guys. So, Connor, who's leverage in the top tier? <laughs> <laughs> uh, isn't that the question of the minute? Pretty much. Rory McIlroy, 4.4 projected. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we love Rory. We're both huge McIlroy fans, but this is not his type of golf course. It's not. His, his wedge game has been so atrocious. What would you say Rory's type of golf course is right now? Uh, Corrales Punta Cana in the Dominican at <laughs> 7,600 yards. He would win that thing easily. Left-handed. If he, if he could play in Dubai again, he would do great. <laughs> um, yeah, joking aside, though, the le- the leverage up there is decisively Rory at 11-2, 4.4% projected. Uh, Colin Morikawa would be your next play uh, if Ooh, you're going I for like leverage. It. I like it. Like 10 it. flat, 11%. Perfect. Um, I think this is a spot where if um, I'll probably tread lightly with Scotty just because of the risk of withdrawal um, and 22% projected right now. Too high. Yeah. It just seems to me that if something goes on or, or the wife gives birth and he's out of here, like boxing out 22% of the field right off the jump because they played Scotty and I'm saving $3,000 makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Smart. Uh, I'll have a little bit of Xander and obviously Oberg. Patrick Cantley, we didn't talk about on the betting side, but Patrick Cantley rates out extremely well here because he's played well here. He plays well at P. Dye golf courses. His recent form, however, has been very bad. Uh, this guy seems to be a little bit out of sorts this season, but, I mean, it's still Patrick Cantley. We, we keep talking about him as if he's a bygone player, but we've seen this guy play well at this type of golf course many, many times. I, I can't lay a lot like Xander for me. I just, I, I don't, I can't envision a situation where they're going to put it together and win. Like they're both like such similar golfers, which with such like and their besties, which makes it funny. And like, they're just underwhelming. Like yeah. you, you look at Xander every time Xander's within striking distance, he gags it away. <laughs> and can't lay is really kind of the same way, except that can't lay is in position to win a lot less than Xander is somehow. So yeah, like, I, I Interesting. Uh, Tommy Fleetwood, not your it. best DFS score, but 9,800. That's nice. I will play the shit out of that. Uh, we had a question about Max Homa in the comments. I think Max Homa is plenty good enough to be in the DFS pool. Uh, I don't think he wins here because, I mean, his approach game is great, but he's been super up and down. His highs are very high. His lows are very low. If I could get Homa at, like... 8,800. I'd play a lot of Homa. 9,700. 9,700. I can't, I can't do it. Like I, Fitzpatrick is a better play at 96. Am I right? Yeah, I think so. And then like another guy we didn't talk about in, uh, in betting is, is Wyndham Clark actually. Like I would like him better on a course where distance, uh, and had a little less emphasis on around, around the green, but he really, he really is such an excellent approach player when he's on. Mm-hmm. And um, he can put the lights out. And you go back to like the thing we've been saying for a couple of weeks now is if you take Scotty Scheffler um, out of the PGA, Wyndham's got like another couple of wins under his belt at this point in the season. So pretty much, yeah, he's he's playing as well as anybody. Uh, Willie Z is definitely in the pool. Uh, I think I'm going to skip the Gala this week, even though short game's awesome. His off the tee game is erratic, which will kill him at this uh, type of golf course. Uh, I'll skip Cam Young and Tony Fee now and Shane Lowry in DFS. Shane Lowry can't putt. Uh, Justin Thomas probably makes the pool, but at low exposure. Corey Connors, no fucking way am I playing him in a course that requires <laughs> good short game. Uh, Sam Burns, I will play Sam Burns for sure at that price. 8,200, that's where we want uh max homa to be is it not sam burns and max homa very similar golfers and we give sam burns very little credit for being a good golfer especially with the short game yeah sam burns has got the baby issue though too so i don't know i i i'm I'm worried i'm worried with scheffler and burns that we don't get a full tournament you know what's great about sam burns is you can spend less money and get russell henley sibu kim Jason Day, Brian Harmon, Denny McCarthy, they're all right there in the low eights and high sevens. Therefore, you don't have to make that choice. If you don't feel great about Sam Burns, don't play him. What do, uh, what do you think about our question from the chat? Got Justin Thomas. 
Ben on Xander and Henley and PJ fantasy. I think you're sitting pretty good because J- <laughs> JT and JT and Henley for sure are going to play well here. Xander is solid every week. He's going to get top 10. Ben on is the one that scares us both because he's either going to be top five here. or He's going to miss this cut in a blaze of glory. We don't know. Like that's he's the enigmatic play. We talked about this earlier where he, we run it one way. He's fourth in the model, run it the other way and he's dead last. So I don't know about Ben on, but the other three guys, I think you should feel pretty comfortable that you're going to do fine this week. Yeah, for sure. And if it's like DFS, um, I'm guessing that based on those guys that you've got, you probably have somewhere in the mid eight eighty five hundred ish left. I probably Kieran Renshaw. Thank you so much for loving. Yeah, thank show. you. By the way, I missed that part. Kieran. Well, we're glad to have you come. Come and talk to us every week. What a great Irish name. Yeah, us Irish. We got to stick together. Oh, yeah. um, Potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say, if you're playing DFS um, with that roster you just laid out, you probably got some money in the mid eights. Mm-hmm. I would probably, I would probably look at adding like a Sam Burns or a Siwoo Kim. Um, Woo! If you've got the spend, go up to Willie Z. Um, maybe yeah. throw a couple of darts at Sahith. I'd like him better in a place that you know a little less a- or a little more, a little less accuracy off the tee. But that would be an option. All right, so Chris Kirk. Christian Bezadenhout and JT Poston. You can also go down to Harris English at 70, 7,500 oh. that you talked about. English, not the best DFS play because he's a really steady Eddie guy. doesn't really light the fireworks, but uh, JT Poston and Chris Kirk do score lots of points. Bez, another steady Eddie guy like English where this, this tier is pretty strong. I think my, I think my player pool is going to be a little wider this week because of the values here. Not because I love these golfers, but because their prices are right. I don't. I don't want to miss a value play where it's there. Yeah, I don't have much interest in posting. Um, I'll have some Bez. I'll have some English. I will dabble with Taylor Moore again. He hasn't completely yes. screwed me yet. Not yet. <laughs> it's, we're waiting for it. Um, Jaeger bombs. Yeah. I probably. I was just about to say. Jager I probably. <laughs> I probably get down more this way. I actually have a lot of interest in Brendan Todd at 7,100. The Todd father. Um, for all the reasons that we keep playing Brendan Todd and not accuracy, related to just the hat accuracy, picking him. Accuracy. Accuracy. <laughs> you play the Todd father when accuracy is at a premium. That's that's the rule. And my boy Hoagie's down here. Shut up. I'd <laughs> rather play Mathieu Pavon. There's your beer bet. Hoagie versus the Frenchman who's a very solid player and looked pretty solid at Augusta, by the way. All over it. I will take that. You're going to take the the Hoagie versus Pavon? Mark it down. Let's go. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, in the the sevens, in the sevens, though, to round it out so we can get into the sixes. um, In the sevens, for me, uh, it's going to be English, Todd, and Hoagie. Okay. I think I'm with you there. I'm just going to broaden it out a little bit more because I like like the value on a lot of those guys. Uh, 6,900 on Kurt Kitayama. Interesting play here. I don't know. It's kind of a borderline play for me. I, I'm, I'm obviously a fan, so you can't make, I'm just, yeah. There you see Tim, Tim knows, Tim knows. What do you, th- what do you think, Connor? Kitayama in the pool or not? Uh, I'm going to take a pass on Kitayama this week. Uh, just too much accuracy requirement. Um, what about Eric Cole? Cause he's accurate. Yeah, what's weird about Cole is I want to play him so bad, but he's been so bad. Yeah, what's up with that? I'm gonna play him. I think I think yeah. this is the bounce back week. Eric Van Royen, Justin Rose, Mackenzie Hughes, Nick Taylor. I'm playing all of them. I think I'm gonna be heavy towards the top in a lot of lineups, so I'll be down here quite a bit. Um, yep, yep, yep. It, it's probably for me. It's Hadwin Van Royen, Cole. Um, I'll fire some shots at nap again. Our loony friend, Adam Hadwin. Approach, make some putts, get out of here. Like, I think Nick Taylor is going to do better as the Canadian representative. Mackenzie Hughes, another Canadian, this is a Canadian tier right here in the high sixes. Uh, Grayson Murray, another, man, we just like loading up Adam Svensson. I'm not playing Svensson. Svensson killed me this season, like absolutely killed me. Adam Svensson cost me so much money this season. I will not play him. <clears throat> Even if there's a fire. What do you think? <laughs> what, 
What do you think of Ek- Ekrode at 6,400 at 17% projected? Well, he is averaging 72 fantasy points a week, which is by far the highest in this tier. I think I'll skip him on the basis of chalk. You don't need to be eating chalk down here. Just Good don't do Lord. It. That's not, not what we do here. That's not what we do here. I would rather play. Not up in here. I would rather play uh, Chandler Phillips, 6,000 flat. Eric Barnes, 6,000 flat. Those are smart plays. No chalk whatsoever. Uh, you heard it here first. Eric Barnes, Chandler Phillips, future stars on tour. We're going to keep chanting those names. And when it happens, we'll clip the audio from this show and last year's shows, wherever they were mentioned, and say, we told you so. <laughs> All it, right. It, at least for sure, you'll say, I told oh, you so. Definitely. Uh, what is, who's going to win this thing other than Scotty, a non Scotty winner, and what the winning score will be? I'll go Fleetwood at 17. Ooh, Fleetwood's going to get his first PGA Tour win. You heard it here first. I think it's going to be Colin Morikawa at 19 under par. First round leader? I'm going to go with... Willie Z. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, let's yeah. be let's be aligned. I'll go Willie, Willie Z. Willie Z, first round leader. Because Willie Z was almost my outright pick. Almost. Let's go. Drum roll. Hat pick. I'll hail the hat. The hat has selected with the first overall pick. Number 29 in Bo and Mai's model. 29. Let's see who's. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Number 29 in my model is none other than Harris English. Wow. What a, what a serendipitous hat oh, pick. Damn you hat. Hey, the hat pick has played the all the, both weeks we've played it. Uh, my number 29 is somebody we didn't talk about, and it's JT Poston, the postman. So not bad. Oh, the hat could be onto something. The hat's been the on hat. a bit of a heater. So JT Poston, number one in this field on par fours between four and 450, which is a very strong metric here. And number four on strokes gained around the greens. So JT Poston, be careful when you're talking about the postman. It's the first time the hat has picked one of the players that we've written up. So it is. <clears throat> tune in next week to see if I burn the hat. For the Zurich, you're going to have to have a... T- where, how are we going to do the hat pick for the Zurich? That's a good question. We're gonna have to pick two numbers, but then, you, or no, we just say who's paired with the person we pick, right? Yeah. Yep. Or I could, or we could do price ranges or something. I'll figure. I'll figure. I'll figure something out. So Tim, they heard it here: Harris English and or JT Poston for the hat pick. Love it. <laughs> Join us next week for the team event, the Zurich Classic of Nolens. We'll have some jambalaya, some beignets, and team golf because everybody's talking about team golf these days. And if you like two fat Irishmen getting drunk because uh, it's a goofy event to talk about, you're in for a treat. Oh, Kate Millie Falcha. <laughs> All right. From Connor Coughlin, I, of course, am Bo McBrayer. For In Between Media, make sure you like, subscribe, jingle the bell. This has been the 19th hole. Hit the outro, Bo. Hit the outro, Bo.